Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome to Arbin Hardware. In today's video, we're going to build your next budget $500 gaming PC. Meet Fantex P350X. And inside here, we find AMD's latest and greatest APU called Ryzen 5 3400G with built-in Vega 11 graphics. And this is a 4-core and 8-thread processor with graphics fast enough to actually game on, which makes this PC the perfect pick for anyone that want to build a PC that they can game on right now. And maybe toss in a cheap RDNA 2 or Nvidia Ampere based graphics card later down the road. Now to get as much performance out of the APU as possible guys, I am pairing this with 16 gigs of super fast 3600 MHz DDR4 memory. Yeah, and in today's video, we're going to build this PC together. We're also going to look at gaming benchmarks a bit later. And in case you want to build this PC yourself, you find all parts listed down below. And if you don't want to miss any upcoming PC builds, make sure to leave a big like on the video and subscribe to never miss an episode yeah with that said let's start with the motherboard coming in at just over 70 bucks the gigabyte b450m ds3h makes our base for this build a ds3h pretty much ticks all the boxes and all the essentials you definitely want on the motherboard we're getting four memory slots in total with support for dual channel plenty of io including a dvi as well as an hdmi 2.0 that supports 4k up to 60 hertz we're getting a heatsink over the VRMs, four SATA 3 ports as well as a single M.2. As you might be able to tell, the B450M is actually slightly smaller than the regular motherboard which makes it a bit cheaper. But yeah, it should be said guys, this won't have any impact on the gaming performance. Let's move on to the CPU then, and in today's build, we're hooking up the B450 with this. This is AMD's latest and greatest 150 US dollar APU flagship. Now, unlike it's cheaper, 90 $39.3200G. The 3400G comes with SMT, a better graphics chip, and it's also soldered, just like the more expensive chips, which should also allow for lower temperatures and better overclock potential. And with its built in 11 CU count Vega graphics, it is powerful enough to actually game on. And in terms of CPU performance, we can see that the 3400G is not a whole lot slower than the Core i7 7700K, which, uh, yeah, should be said, is a very solid 4-core gaming CPU. Inside the box, alongside the processor itself, we also find a CPU cooler. And in order to install this, we need to first uninstall these socket brackets you see here. And once these have been removed, yeah, we can install the cooler. As for RAM, guys, I found this 3600 MHz kit from Corsair Super Cheap. And I urge you guys to pick high-speed sticks for this build as the way that Ryzen and these APUs work. You gain more performance by having higher rated mem sticks and because the gpu unit doesn't have any video memory itself it essentially has to borrow and share that from the system and that is why we need as fast ddr4 sticks as possible to get as much performance out of the gpu as we can once installed it is time to present the case and in today's build yeah we're gonna make use of fantex p350x coming in at just 69 bucks this is a mid-sized tower with dual leds at the front as well as a third one right below the tempered glass there is a 120mm fan that comes included. It's got plenty of ventilation with dust filters. It's got support for a 240 radiator, either in the front or in the top. And there is also enough clearance for a 121 in the back. Now, after installing the IO shield, I like to flip the case down as it makes it easier to line up the motherboard. And by grabbing onto the CPU cooler, it is now super easy to line up everything. And it makes the installment a piece of cake. Because we're already installed CPU and RAM, we we don't have to play around with that inside the case later. Now moving on to the SSD, I once again ended up picking the A400 from Kingston. It has dropped in price quite a lot over its lifespan, and although it isn't the fastest SSD out there, it is certainly more than enough for our PC build today, and 1TB worth of storage should serve us well for quite some time. And on the back of the case, we find two spots here where we can install our SSD. As for power supply, I've been using Corsair for many builds now and I never had any issues. Now see my modular cables allows for a much cleaner and a nicer looking PC build overall and I highly recommend opting for a power supply with removable cables and 550 watts gives us plenty of extra headroom when you let's say want to upgrade to a more powerful graphics card later down the road. And with the installation done, time for some gaming benchmarks. But before we testing the built-in Vega graphics, let's quickly first have a look at the pure CPU performance 
performance and I decided to include a wide range of similarly priced processor and this is essentially what gaming performance you can expect in case you decide to upgrade to let's say RDNA 2 or Ampere later down the road for example and as we can see generally speaking the 3400G is actually quite a lot faster than its older 2400G brother and this is much thanks to the improved cache and memory latency on the redefined Sun Plus architecture and for the most part at 1080p it is faster than the Core i5 3600K and it's not a whole lot slower than the 1600X. Moving beyond 1080p we can see that the 3400G is even more competitive at 1440p and once again we see that it's not far behind the 1600X but as we can see guys as with any budget TPU these days there is a limit how far you can push these 4 core parts. It is obvious that modern games nowadays can utilize more than 4 cores and 8 threads but to be fair considering the 150 US dollar price tag there is no denying that there is a lot of performance here you get out of the 3400G. With that said let's look at gaming with the integrated Vega 11 graphics. First up we got Rocket League and Doom from 2016 stand against the $99 3200G that is cheaper, slightly slower little brother got fewer GPU cores and it's also lacking SMT which can be seen from these results. Rest of the games guys are running at 1080 and 900p where the lowest graphic settings have been used. Now Rainbow Six Siege did actually very good here. Keep in mind of course we're using the lowest possible graphics quality which is of course worth having in mind. Fortnite also plays pretty well in 1080 but that being said Far Cry New Dawn for example is a tad bit much for the 3400G while World War Z for example ran fantastic and so as we can see guys it can actually fluctuate quite a lot between specific games therefore it can be a good idea to look up the games you're planning on playing to see where the Vega 11 lands but overall yeah for being an integrated GPU yeah I think the 3400G is doing fantastic all PC parts guys are linked up down below and if you have any questions feel free to drop it down below let me know what other PC build you would like to see coming up next thank you so much for watching this video and I cannot wait to see you guys in the next video